Okay, welcome back to In the Spotlight. We promised you this clip, and I think it's really an important clip, uh, And we're, we're, but we're going to play something a little bit ahead of that. Uh, we're going to play Kirk Allen. He is one of the founders of the Edgar County Watchdogs. He and John Kraft have done yeoman's work trying to clean yes. up corruption in the state. They have uh, forced out of office nearly 200 public officials beca- by revealing their malfeasance while in office. Yeah. They ha- actually have uh, uh, nearly a couple hundred indict- politi- uh, mm-hmm. uh, criminal indictments, mm-hmm. too, against those folks. So they went to the, I- the ISBE to basically discuss the ISBE um, uh, uh uh, uh, I'm sorry, they they, the they went there to state. discuss the ISBE's um, total failure when it came to a compliance audit under mm-hmm. the Auditor General's office. He also came in to discuss the mask mandate as well. So you're going to hear first from Kirk Allen on in this segment, and then we'll move it to Travis Roundcount, the mm-hmm. superintendent of Mount Zion. So uh, Kirk Allen, here you go. I think he's uh, addressed those comments. I'm going to address follow science. I spent a career in the military, and I wasn't taught to hide, I was taught to fight. No, I don't mean I'm going to come here and physically fight. What are we teaching our kids and the rest of this community in this state about fighting what we are facing? How many programs have focused on individual personal health, increasing the particular vitamin D levels and the zinc levels that help these students and these people? Where is the focus on the fight against the bug, and more importantly, where's the science of when you get the bug, gosh, go home and let's see if you get sicker. Where's the immediate treatment? I'm speaking from one who has recovered from COVID, and you know what? I had no problems. Why? Because I immediately fought with appropriate treatments, and virtually in a matter of 36 hours was symptom-free. But I had to go elsewhere from the state of Illinois to get that treatment because our system wants us to stay home and stay sick. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. But we're not talking about mitigating our personal health. We're talking about what can we do based on CDC's recommendations. And to this day, I've not seen a single recommendation on personal health. Where is it? When you get diagnosed with a disease, do you sit at home and wait? to see if it's going to get worse? I would hope not. I, I, that's not how I was raised. But that's what we're doing. We're going to send kids home and see if they get sick instead of start immediate treatment. It makes no sense. While you're so focused as a board or as the, the superintendent of schools to take action against these local control units, I just ask, and I ask this question of every public body we go to, When you got on this board, did you read your powers and duties? What are they? Or do you just listen to the others that have been here and say, hey, this is how we do it. Where are the laws that say you can do what you're doing? Why do I know we're not following the science? No. I'm sitting here at a table that has no hand sanitizer. Not one person's cleaned it. People put masks on the table, and nobody's worried about it. Thank you. i got 30 seconds. We're not following the science in vast areas. Now he's going to get to the meat of it. Listen to this. What is that? How many of you have read all 26 findings of your last compliance audit? Have you? It's a simple question, yes or no. Have you read those 26 findings? They were failures and non-compliance identified by you people through the Auditor General. Have you read those? Nobody will even raise a hand and say yes. That should tell the public everything we need to know. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, before we were able to jump in and get Tom DeVore on the line, we really did want to cover this a little bit more in yeah. depth. I mean, but we're just going to briefly uh, talk about this. I mean, this is the deal. 26 non-compliance findings. These include mm-hmm. lack of census data reconciliations, non-compliance with the school code on bullying prevention, insufficient controls over school construction projects, Non-compliance with annual state report on special education performance reporting mm-hmm. requirements. Non-compliance with Department of Transitional Bilingual Education reporting requirements. I mean, we're hitting all of right. the, the but, hot buttons well, where people seem to care. But the one that, that jumps out is the timely no- non-compliance yep. with timely notification of felony convictions. Yes. After ISB was ref- 
informed of their failure to properly report felony convictions to T, uh, T, the teacher's retirement system and the retirement fund of the city of Chicago, the auditors documented the following response from ISBE on the matter, which is that the agency is proposing legislation to advance to the General Assembly for spring of 2021 to amend the statute that requires districts, not the agency, to, that, to notify pension systems of any person who is a teacher who has been convicted either after a bench trial, trial by jury, or plea of guilty, or an, of any offense, which a sentence of death or term of imprisonment in a penitentiary for one year or more is provided. The district already has had an obligation to report this information per the statute and proposed legislation simply streamlines the reporting by removing the agency from the process. So they just would like to remove themselves from having to do their job. Essentially, that's Essentially. what they're trying to do. But you really should have a double check. You should Obviously, have the district yeah. both report to the pension system because the local taxpayers are pa buying, mm -hmm. paying some of that. And you should have ISBE report as well. But there should be a timely response on mm -hmm. these on this stuff. One, first of all, Good. teacher certification should be pulled if you have a felony conviction. And number two, if you have a fel felony conviction, you should not be entitled to your pension. And actually, that was put into state law. So that that is the problem here. There's a complete lack of controls on this. This is a really important information. You can read it on the Auditor General's um, st um, um, website. You can go to the Illinois yeah. Auditor General if you're curious at all it's also about on this. the Edgar County Watchdog. Yes, they, they link mm -hmm. to it as well. But I mean, there's all sorts of problems. I mean, non-compliance with the State Charter School mm -hmm. Commission appointment mm -hmm. requirements, in, insufficient controls over annual report um, data, inadequate controls over termination of access, Non-compliance with requirements for emotional intelligence and social and emotional learning task force. I mean, it just goes on and on. It's ridiculous. But this is ISBE at work. Um, now, to, to finish things up, we did want to see it because ISBE had this big board meeting. Yeah. And so many people were there to comment on it. Our last thing that we promised you, I think, is really important. It's mm -hmm. very revealing. It is the Mount Zion School Superintendent, Travis Roundcount. If JP can start to tee that that particular segment up we'd appreciate it mm -hmm. um, he's going to, here he comes in and listen to him speaker on my list is travis roundkelt mount zion superintendent and i appreciate your flexibility thank you all for your time today i didn't plan on speaking but i had a point that i hadn't heard yet and i felt like uh, you need to be aware of it if you weren't already uh, we're supposed to believe that this pandemic is so serious that masks are required for everyone. We're supposed to believe that masks work and save our lives. We're supposed to believe that ISBE and the governor have our best interest at heart and are enforcing this for our safety. Therefore, I ask you, why doesn't the same rule apply to the governor? Just uh, last week, after the governor issued the mask mandate, the governor was in Uplift High School in Chicago, Illinois, and not wearing a mask. I can provide the pictures, or you can see it on his Twitter page. He also allowed a child and a parent standing next to him to not wear the mask in the school. There are no mask exceptions for the governor. <laughs> COVID doesn't pick and choose, right? It's either required for everyone's safety at all times, including the governor, or it's not. Don't tell me he's vaccinated because so am I. Don't tell me it was after three o'clock or there wasn't student present. You know, we have to do it on in-service days as well. Don't tell me that he took it off for just a short time because that luxury isn't given to kids and teachers. Why does the governor get to decide when he can remove a mask in a school that teachers cannot? Why can a kid and a mother with the governor remove their mask but the kid without the governor cannot. If masks don't need to be worn during bill signings and governor photo ops in schools, then they shouldn't be mandated, mandated to teachers and students. According to the World of Meter website, several of our border states have lower death rates per population with less restrictions. Is this really about safety or is this politics? If the governor has a choice in a school, teachers and kids should too. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. We, thank you so much, uh, Superintendent Round Count, for. Mm -hmm for that expose. And I mean, the whole thing is, is that if our bordering states have lower counts without well, mass yeah. mandates, well, he didn't get the memo. COVID's only in Illinois, Kathleen. Right. 
No, I mean, and I think what he's saying I'm is, is where you're seeing a lot of frustrations, like in the first segment we played in at other local board mm-hmm. meetings, where Amer- the American people, by and large, and the people of Illinois specifically, have been very patient and very right. compliant when it comes to these mandates, and they've gotten so many mixed signals from the CDC, from their political leaders, that now, you know, the, the, the credibility of these institutions are, is all being called into question and frustrations are rising and tensions are rising and it's not going to go away. And it shouldn't. And it shouldn't. All right. Mm-hmm. Join us next time for more commentary about everything um, from the state to the federal to the local level. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.